while we're here, let's just look at a few other items. Um, there are lots of different options under your local security policy. Um, log on messages, you can control you know, who can log on locally, who can log on from the network. You know, you want to go through these and familiarize yourself with all of these different settings and security options. Um, in this case, we covered the audit policy. The password policies, remember we talked about um, password complexity. That helps, you know, a cryptic complex password um, would help, you know, protect you from brute force attacks and dictionary attacks. Um, you know, setting a minimum password length, maximum password length, enforcing, you know, password history that keeps users from reusing their old passwords, at least up to a specified number of attempts. The account lockout policy and threshold that protects you from brute force attacks. If they're just trying to randomly go through different sequences of characters or permutations of characters, then that would help protect you by, you know, locking the account out, say, after three bad attempts, it'll wait five minutes or half an hour or something like that. Um, there are just tons and tons of, of settings. Um, the local security policy and group policy under Windows Vista 2008, 2003, XP Professional 2000, even all the way back to 2000 Professional and, and 2000 Advanced Server, 2000 Server, it's, it's, it's a very um, robust and rich uh, you know, control system for a network environment, for, for individual desktops, for workstations, for servers. It's just amazing what you can do with it. Just to look at some of the other items under administrative templates, you know, if we wanted to, we could control the start menu and taskbar and what appears there and, you know, act, whether or not they can use active desktop or the type of wallpaper that they can use. Um, we could pull this over just a little bit and pull this back just a little bit. Some of the Windows components, you'll notice a lot of new items here that were added from security policies and group policy and XP, they've been added to Vista. Um, you know, network control, desktop control, you're talking about that active directory, in this case, settings versus local settings and desktop administrative templates. Um, you know, Windows settings, Internet Explorer, you can control, you know, um, the con you know content filters and the content they can go to, you can specify it. Only certain websites they can go to or certain websites they cannot go to. There, there's just so many things here. We it would take us a really long time to go over them all, but you'll want to familiarize yourself with these things before you take the exam. I'm going to go ahead and close this management console, and no, I won't save the settings, but we're going to log out and log in as Austin Powers. So I'm going to log out and we'll, we'll you know, access that folder, that object, and then we'll go back, we'll log back in and see Germany and look at our security logs. So I'm going to type in Austin Powers. Here I am. I'm a member of Top Secret, Super Secret Spies, and I have permission on the folder, uh, Top Secret in this case, and, and the documents they're in. I have taken ownership of that, um, and my group has privileges as well as administrators. Now I have not yet logged in as Austin Powers. He was just created, so... It takes Vista a moment to create or prepare the desktop for a new user account. And you'd, you know, likewise you would experience the same phenomena were, were you an XP professional or, you know, utilizing a local account in 2003 or 2008 server. So Austin Powers, my documents folder and his, you know, settings and preferences, they're all different from C Germany's. He can have his own settings. Now I had mine tweaked for performance. Austin Powers, by default, gets, you know, all, all of the, the beautiful aeroshell here, and, you know, we can set it up so he has desktop gadgets on boot. But really what we're just concerned with here is launching Explorer. So we're going to launch Explorer, and we want to create some audit, you know, some auditing account entries in our security log. And let me go... And that was the wrong explorer. All right, we'll go to my computer. And let's look at, go into top secret. Let's just do, we want to do something that will create some account entry. So we'll open this. Um, we'll make some changes to it. And save it. We'll open this super secrets and we'll close it. 
um, we'll create an object here. And here, again, you know, under the default settings, notice that my file extensions are being hidden. Um, also notice where I to go. Here. Virus database has been updated. Well, what do you know? <laughs> anyway, where I to go here, um, and look at the properties. In this case, I have sharing set up to use, you know, a sharing wizard rather than advanced. Let me log out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log off as Austin Powers now. <laughs> And I'll log in as C Germany. And I'm going to go over here, open up the management console. I want to look at my security logs in Event Viewer. And I want to go to Windows Logs. And a little time there. And notice here are all of my audit events. In this case, I successfully open a document, or if I modify it or save, um, it will make a little room here. And then it gives me an event ID, task category. You know, I'm accessing the file system. Um, log on events, security events, it just logs the date and the time. But that's a very useful, you know, changing the audit policy, security state change. Um, you know, this is a very useful tool for security purposes, for tracking down when users are doing something they're not supposed to do or accessing files they should not access. Just be aware, excessive auditing can really slow your system's performance down. If it has to write entries to the log every single time an object is open, closed, access, save to, there's a failure, there's a success, that can create a significant drain on your system's performance. So you have to kind of balance your need for security with your need for performance. You only want to audit the things that are really super important, the things that you need to audit, but you don't really want to audit everything on your system. Okay, and well, that's about it. That concludes this session of our Vista post installation setup, configuration, and sort of an overview of the features within Vista.